Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, fans of so this is Battlefield 1. In today's weapon review, we're going to be revisiting the Machine Pistola M1912, a weapon that hasn't only seen various changes and updates since the last time that we've reviewed it on this channel, but more importantly, in the Weapon Crates DLC, actually got a new variant added to it that works quite a little bit different from the previously available Machine Pistola Storm variant, at least unofficially. That being said, as per usual for these weapon reviews, we're going to be looking at the stats of the weapon, how it performs on the battlefield, how the different variants compare both to each other, as well as other available weapons for the Assault class in Battlefield 1. And last, but certainly not least, of course, we're also going to be talking about how to get the most out of this weapon when using it on the battlefield. That being said, let's start off with the stats, and as baseline for today's analysis, we're going to be using the Storm, or unmarked variant of the Machine Pistola, because it is essentially the baseline variant of it. It comes in, in the meantime, with a maximum damage of 26.5 and a minimum damage of 15, guaranteeing you, of course, that standard SMG four-shot close-quarter kill, and, of course, further out, requiring quite a few bullets more to actually down your targets, seven in total from a distance of 31 meters onwards. The fire rate has been reduced, but still record high at 900 rounds per minute. The usual poor muzzle velocity at 350 meters per second is no surprise, and the magazine size hasn't changed either. It's still at 16. Equally still frustrating are the reload times. Now, they are a little bit complicated because this is a single and strip clip fed, well, weapon, more like actually a pistol, specifically a machine pistol or fully automatic pistol. This weapon therefore has a single bullet reload of 2.35 seconds with each additional bullet taking you 0.42 seconds to reload. So quickly there from three bullets onwards, you're looking at a very, very lengthy reload time, well over three, easily into four seconds. If you reload an entire strip clip, that's eight bullets at a time, that will actually take you 3.66 seconds. And if you fully empty the gun, which in certain situations is actually the best way to get it reloaded the fastest way, it'll take you 4.1 seconds to completely reload this baby. Reload times and the necessarily small magazine are something we'll touch on a little bit later, but is of course one of the major weaknesses of this weapon. Equally one of the major weaknesses are the recoil stance of it. With 0.63 vertical and quite hefty 0.48 degrees to the left and right, that is horizontal recoil, as well as a slightly reduced in the meantime, but nowhere near to as good previous first shot recoil multiplier at 1.9 instead of the blissful 1.0 it at one stage actually had. When it comes to the spread values of this weapon, well, things are on the slightly better side, but still essentially what you would expect. The base spread values are 0.4, that's, well, ADS, that's aiming down sight and not moving. 0.5 for aiming down sight and moving simultaneously. And hip fire while standing and moving at 1.5 and a spread increase of 0.045. The only thing that is essentially better than maybe your average close quarter orientated SMG or weapon similar to an SMG in this case is the first shot spread multipliers both for hip fire and ADS here at four the slightly below something for example like the annihilator which comes in at six and thus is even more inaccurate compared to this weapon but let's talk a little bit about the differences between it and its main competitor the experimental variant of it well the main differences here are obviously that while the machine pistol the M1912 is a fully automatic weapon that previously was best used while bursting. There is now a debate over whether that is still the case. The experimental variant of the M1912 is actually a burst mode only, and it bursts at a higher rate of fire, 1,200 rounds per minute. Now, obviously, there's going to be a little bit of time between those bursts. In reality, you're not going to burst it perfectly, so the fire rate will vary, but its damage output is definitely up there, if not higher than that of the Machine Pistola M1912 default, or Storm variant, if you so will. That's the first difference to note. And the burst firing comes with a set of advantages and disadvantages. Most importantly, however, not everybody likes burst fire weapons. So if you're somebody who hates burst firing, then the experimental is certainly not the one of the two weapons here you're going to necessarily want to use. Another difference to note between these two weapons is in the recoil department. Here, whereas the machine pistol has slightly lower, or I should rather say quite significantly lower, vertical recoil at 0.63, the experimental is significantly higher at 0.787. However, and arguably more importantly, when it comes to the horizontal recoil, that is to the left and right, the experimental has the storm variant beat quite clearly, with 0.36 to the left and right versus the previously mentioned 0.48. The same goes for the first shot recoil multiplier, 1.9 on the storm or default variant, and 1.583 for the experimental variant. 
Equally interesting is the difference when it comes to spread. The experimental value simply coming in with lower spreads essentially across the board. The one difference that they actually have is the base ADS that's aiming downside while not moving. But additionally to that, the spread decrease, and that's degrees per second, is also better on the machine pistol experimental at 5.4, about double that that it is on the normal variant. And that wraps up the differences, at least from a stat perspective, not in essence how they are played though. The Machine Pistola default variant or Storm variant, in my opinion, very much has been changed from a previously excellent at burst firing to generally just a mag dumping weapon. Similar to the Annihilator, just basically more damage, lower magazine size and frankly, usually even longer reload times than the Annihilator and that's saying quite something actually. It's difficult to control outside of its ideal engagement distance and that ideal engagement distance is very limited and you're gonna have to make sure your shots are on target with it. The Experimental is a different beast entirely. It's played differently. For a matter of fact, it's played closer to how the Machine Pistola originally was played when it first came out. Now, arguably, you're dealing here with two round bursts instead of four to eight round bursts, which is how it was played previously, and you don't have a first shot spread multiplier of one. Neither do you have a first shot recoil multiplier of one. So, bursting the weapon is a lot harder. But because of the way this weapon is set up, essentially, all you have to worry about is bursting correctly, regularly and on target, as well as controlling the absolutely massive amount of vertical recoil you're going to be dealing with. That, unlike however equally spread horizontal recoil, you can actually do. It's not impossible to control vertical recoil, even if it is as high as 0.787 degrees per shot. And that's not even accounting for the 1.583 first shot recoil multiplier. So when it comes to then using the experimental variant, recoil control is absolutely key. And with that in mind, you'll be dealing with a weapon that is significantly more accurate than your average SMG, while still packing a punch that can rival anything but a shotgun in close encounter combat. Which is why the experimental is in some ways a homage or tribute to the previous version of the machine pistola. It is once more that absolute beast, that skill cannon, but that requires a serious time commitment and investment as I originally said when reviewing the default variant of the machine pistola back when it behaved a little bit differently to truly master. And my gameplay today is absolutely no indication of how good you really can get with this weapon, especially because my vertical recoil control has, well, basically evaporated into close to nothingness since the days of Battlefield 4 switching over to Battlefield 1. That of course is a topic for another discussion. What I'd really like to know is what you think of the Machine Pistola M1912, specifically the Experimental. In my opinion, it is the superior weapon. In my opinion, it is however also the more difficult to use weapon. And depending on your personal preference, playstyle, and how try hard you really wanna get, you may prefer the default or storm variant over the more difficult to use Experimental variant. With that being said, however, leave your experiences as well as your usual video suggestions down below in the comments or hit me up with them on Twitter. If you if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. But with all that being said, I'd like to thank you very much for watching and hope to see you in the next Battlefield 1 video.